Imagine standing in the heart of Yellowstone at dawn. The air is still, steam rises from distant geysers, and under your feet, there's something. A faint hum, a slow pulse, a distant rumble that doesn't sound like wind or water. It's as if the earth is speaking quietly, in a language we don't fully understand. These are not the loud cracks of an earthquake or the rush of boiling springs. This is something subtler, a steady murmur, recorded deep below ground, that has scientists leaning in and asking, what exactly is making Yellowstone whisper? What people have noticed visitors have described feeling odd vibrations while walking near thermal areas, gentle, rhythmic, but strangely persistent. Park rangers have heard low, rolling noises near geyser basins when no eruptions were happening. Some sound like distant machinery, others like a slow drumbeat. Sensitive monitoring equipment has also picked up patterns that don't match typical seismic activity. No sharp jolts, no obvious quake signatures. These aren't isolated reports either. The noises seem to appear and fade in cycles, sometimes lasting hours, sometimes just minutes. What makes it so curious is that the source isn't visible. The ground looks calm, but somewhere beneath, something is moving. When these sounds first caught attention, people tried to explain them in the simplest ways possible. Maybe it was wildlife moving underground. Perhaps geothermal pumps or human activity miles away were carrying sound through the ground. Others suggested sediment shifting in Yellowstone's hot water systems, or minor tremors too small to be felt. These ideas made sense at first glance. After all, sound travels well through rock and water. But as more recordings came in, those explanations started to break down. The frequencies didn't match machinery, the timing didn't match human schedules, and the patterns didn't fit with random animal movement or loose soil. Whatever was making the noise seemed to be part of Yellowstone's own natural system, not an outside intruder. What science is actually hearing the sounds aren't random. Instruments at Yellowstone, seismometers, infrasound arrays, and highly sensitive ground sensors have been picking up very specific low-frequency vibrations. These aren't the sharp, jagged spikes you see in earthquake data. Instead, the patterns look like steady hums, slow pulses, and occasional waves that swell and fade over minutes or hours. Many of these signals are strongest near hydrothermal zones, and their timing often lines up with changes in geyser or hot spring behavior. Scientists call this long period period, seismicity. It's a signature of movement and pressure change deep below the surface, but without the fracture-breaking energy of a quake. The hydrothermal connection. One leading explanation is that these sounds are the voice of Yellowstone's massive hydrothermal system. Beneath the surface is a complex network of channels, reservoirs, and vents filled with superheated water and steam. As pressure changes, that hot water can surge through constricted spaces, releasing bursts of steam and creating deep, resonant tones. Think of the whistle from a steam kettle, but magnified to the scale of mountains. These underground plumbing changes can happen quickly, which is why sensors might catch hours of activity with no visible change at the surface. The gurgles, groans, and rumbles are all part of the park's constant adjustment as heat from below meets water from above. Are magma movements behind it? Of course, whenever Yellowstone makes a new sound, the question comes up, could it be magma? The answer is possibly, but not in the dramatic sense people imagine. Large-scale magma movement toward the surface would trigger intense swarms of quakes and noticeable ground uplift. Signals we're not seeing right now. But smaller scale intrusions or shifts in the semi-molten rock miles below could still create pressure changes that ripple upward into the hydrothermal system. That interaction between magma, heat, rock, and water is what fuels Yellowstone's energy in the first place. So while scientists aren't calling this a sign of imminent eruption, they are watching closely to see if these sounds coincide with any other subtle changes in temperature, gas output, or ground movement. What it means for safety and research. These subterranean sounds aren't just a curiosity, they're a new tool for understanding Yellowstone's hidden systems. By tracking these low-frequency vibrations, scientists can spot changes in the hydrothermal network before anything is visible on the surface. If a channel is pressurizing or a vent is shifting, the sound signature often changes first. That early notice can help manage risks for visitors, protect infrastructure like boardwalks and roads, and give park staff time to respond to sudden changes in hot spring or geyser behavior. For researchers, it's also a rare chance to map the underground plumbing in a way that complements seismic, thermal, and gas monitoring. 
real people, real measurements. In recent years, Yellowstone researchers have combined these sound recordings with other data to piece together small but telling events. For example, a stretch of unusual low-frequency pulses near Norris Geyser Basin coincided with a subtle rise in ground temperature and minor deformation in the area. In another case, faint rhythmic vibrations detected over several days lined up with changes in a distant thermal spring's output. Each time, the story comes together from multiple threads, data on a screen, field notes in the park, and observations that might otherwise seem unrelated. It's the human element in science, people listening, watching, and connecting the dots in real time. Where this mystery leads next, Yellowstone's monitoring network is already one of the most advanced in the world, and it's about to get even better. Plans are underway to install new, more sensitive acoustic sensors alongside existing seismometers, creating a dense listening grid across key hydrothermal areas. These upgrades will help scientists track how sounds move through the ground, pinpoint their sources, and see how they change with the seasons or after seismic events. Over the next few years, Yellowstone could become the most acoustically mapped volcanic system on the planet. The goal isn't just to solve the mystery of these subterranean sounds, it's to understand how heat, water, and rock interact beneath one of the most complex and dynamic landscapes on Earth. If you could listen, what would you hear? Imagine standing on a cool morning in Yellowstone, before the tourists arrive, when the only sounds are wind in the pines and the distant hiss of a geyser. You place your hand on the ground and feel a faint, steady pulse. Somewhere below, there's a low hum, so quiet you might not notice unless you were listening for it. These are not the dramatic roars of eruptions or the bubbling of hot springs, but the quieter rhythms of a living planet. They hint at water moving, steam escaping, and rock shifting far beneath your feet. It's a reminder that Yellowstone is always in motion, even when everything on the surface seems still. The most captivating parts of Yellowstone's story aren't only the big eruptions or iconic geysers, they're the conversations happening deep underground in the language of pressure, heat, and movement. Scientists are learning to translate that language, turning faint sounds into valuable clues. For visitors, it's a chance to see Yellowstone as more than a postcard landscape. It's a living system, speaking every hour of every day. If you're willing to listen, the Earth will tell you far more than any headline ever could.